focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Decoding Business Growth Season 2. I'm your host, A.B. Ravi. In India, succession planning is a way of life in the family-run businesses. Very typically, the eldest son of the family takes over the reins. It is similar to the Karta system followed by the Hindu undivided family. But not all succession planning in India have been smooth and amicable. Most of them have been stormy, only to end in a bitter court battle. But a few stand out like an oasis in the desert. And you can count those families on your fingertip. And one such family is the Kolkata-based R.P. Goenka family. The late Ramaprasad Goenka, the man who built the RPG group, amicably divided the empire between his two sons, Harsh and Sanjeev, during his lifetime. Now it's the turn of his son, Sanjeev Goenka, to do likewise. Sanjeev is grooming his son, Shashwat, who returned to India some three years back after studying at Wharton. But being the only son does not mean it will be a cakewalk. He has to prove himself. So Sanjeev Goenka is putting Shashwat through a ringer. The first task he gave him was to turn around Spencer's Retail, a 100-year-old retail outlet that has been bleeding for years. Shashwat picked the gauntlet. In three years' time, he has managed to put Spencer's Retail on an even keel. Take a look at Spencer's Retail story. It provides a fascinating glimpse into how a combination of pedigree, professionalism and passion creates a true winner. Generally, most 20-plus youngsters who have just stepped out of college typically try to figure out their next course of action as to whether they should pick up a job or study further. But if you are born into an illustrious business family, then such worries become secondary. You have not only a ready-made empire waiting for you, but also an eager father keenly awaiting to groom you so that eventually you take over the reins. In a way, that's what happened to the Wharton educated Shashwat Goenka, son of Sanjeev Goenka, who runs a clutch of companies like CESC, Saregama, and Spencer's under the banner of RP Sanjeev Goenka Group, headquartered in Kolkata. As soon as Shashwat returned to India, his father entrusted him with the tough task of turning around the 100 year old Spencer's retail. The expectations were high from everybody and for obvious reasons, as Shashwat's late grandfather Rama Prasad Goenka, known as the Takeover King, had built a formidable empire and Spencer's retail was his acquisition. Similarly, Shashwat's father had proved his mettle by turning around CESC and various prized assets. So Shashwat had to prove himself. It was trial by fire. The retail outlet had a rich history. It was perhaps one of the earliest entrants into the retail space in India with its first store being set up in 1920. And this supermarket chain was acquired by the RPG Group from a Britisher, John William Spencer, in 1989. So when he entered the scene in 2013, Spencer's had 131 stores including 37 hyper stores in 35 cities and was bleeding for years. For the year ended March 2013, it reported a loss of 209 crore rupees. It was a classic dilemma. He could not apply the theory he had learned at Wharton as the Indian consumers were a different kettle of fish. Retail for me was something that I've always been interested in since we were kids. Uh, whenever we went abroad shopping or even within India shopping with family. I was never interested in actually the purchase of the product. I was more interested in why products are displayed in a particular way. Why are they kept next to something else? Why are they sold at prices like 9.99 or 19.99 and why not just a round number of 10 or 20? And, and so I think it was these aspects that I, at that, that point I didn't understand was retail. But as I grew older, I understood, okay, that's retail. And I used to find that very interesting. Why do consumers behave the way they do? Why do people get excited about certain things and not about the other things? Why do some stores have white lighting and yellow lighting? Shashwat rolled up his sleeves and got into the act. The first thing he did was to simplify and streamline the organizational structure to enable faster decision making and reduce the bureaucracy. Importantly, under him, 
Spencer's retail had shifted from running a combination of small local stores and hypermarkets to focusing on hypermarkets. He rationalized operations by closing down a few stores in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and other parts of South India as they were incurring losses. Besides, he took the hard decision to exit from the West as it was unremunerative. Effectively, the number of stores reduced to 118 from 131 earlier. He also managed to cut the monthly energy bill by shifting to LEDs. More importantly, he plugged theft and pilferage in all his stores. So one of the first few things that I had done was really sharpen the vision of the company. And, and so the vision we outlaid was to be the most profitable and the most preferred company within the country as far as hypermarket retailing goes. Um, the second thing that I did was bring a focus on the hypermarket business itself. So Spencer's operates in three formats, which is the daily or convenience stores, supermarkets and hypermarkets. And in the past, the focus was equal on all three. But one of the things that, that we sort of did three years ago was bring that focus specifically on the hypermarket business. It's a larger store which has a larger variety of categories present which allows you to get a larger basket size and, and therefore you get better profitability from that store. So these were those two things and the third thing that we did was we examined all our existing stores in the geographies that they were present and we looked to consolidate them. About five or six years ago um, we had sort of expanded very quickly and rapidly across the country. So there were a lot of pockets where we were spread very thin so it was very hard to achieve those economies of scale. And, and so we said, okay, let, let's pick geographies where we have some level of scale and where we can grow further. Let's focus on those and let's exit geographies where we have at most one store, we are running standalone. So there's no uh, distribution center or DC as we call it supplying to them. And so we decided to exit the entire western part of the country and focus on the north, eastern and southern parts of the country. Shashwat's strategy was yielding results. Footfall started increasing. To retain the loyalty of these customers, Shashwat moved away from the traditional food-centric format to non-food categories such as apparel, electronics and general merchandise which command higher margins. All these initiatives had the desired effect. We aspire to provide customers not only what they need within their local environment but how do we make products that are not otherwise locally available to them. So in any of our stores, for example if you go to a store in Calcutta, you will be able to get foods that you get which are local to Karnataka, to Andhra Pradesh, to Gujarat, to Rajasthan, you'll get all those regional foods in one place. To keep delighting the customers, Spencer's is now offering experiential food options from around the globe through Epic Cuisine hubs at select hypermarkets. Epic Cuisine selections provide freshly cut fruits, vegetables, meat and ready-to-eat food packets for busy couples to save time in the kitchen without compromising on their health. Responding to this enthusiastic response, Shashwat has decided to allocate about 30% of Spencer's hypermarket space to the Epic Cuisine range. The whole idea behind Epic Cuisine was how do you take a lot of the work that the, that the people at home have to do in the kitchen and bring it into the store such that their work in the kitchen is reduced because of that constraint in time. And so the focus came about on a lot of value added products. So for example, fresh fruits and vegetables, how do you offer cut varieties of fresh fr fruits and vegetables to the consumers? So we had prepackaged cut bhindi, um, cut brinjal, you know, um, cut jackfruit, products that are hard to cut on a daily basis at home, they, they are time consuming, and, and, but, but are consumed as part of your everyday lunch and dinner offerings. Uh, with that, we also had our gourmet assortment which was present within our stores. Again, it was present across the country. So we said, how do we tie that in into this whole concept of epic cuisine? So epic cuisine is really a combination of two words, epicenter and cuisines. Shashwat's efforts are yielding dividends. Spencer's revenue per square foot has gone up from 1,226 rupees in FY 2013 to 1,452 rupees in FY 2016. Similarly, footfalls have increased from 41.5 million to 43 million, while cart size per customer has gone up from 450 rupees to 650 rupees during the same period. And all these numbers have shored up the top line and reduced losses. Thus, revenue increased from 1,390 crore rupees in FY 2013 
to 1,923 crore rupees in FY 2016. EBITDA losses during the same period have shrunk to 30 crore rupees from 76 crore rupees. Well, Shashwat has proved his mettle and done his illustrious grandfather proud. On that positive note, it's time for a short break. When we come back, CNBC TV 18's A.B. Ravi talks to Ashwani Kare of ICICI Securities to understand how the market views Shashwat's management skills and how they are bullish on the future of Spencer's retail. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In spite of the fact that Spencer's had the first mover advantage, its growth rate has been very slow compared to its peer group. CNBC TV 18's AB Ravi asks Ashwani Kare of ICSA Securities the reason for this and whether, under Shashwat Goenka, this retail chain is nimble footed. This is what Ashwani has to say. Take a look. Ashwani, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ravi. Ashwani, if I may begin by asking you, the Goenka had a first move advantage. They acquired Spencer's in 1989. Yet, their growth rate has been quite slow when you look at the competitors who came into the scene quite late. Is it because retail was not the focus, initial part of the years? Well, I would say it's a combination of the two. Uh, if you recall, organized retail in India started only post-1991. So really when they started, there wasn't so much of organized retail. It was fragmented, unorganized industry. Yeah. And the evolution of the industry happened much, much later. Yeah. It almost took almost a decade true, before true. the industry yeah. could come up. Clubbed with that, I think they had the issue like they had a joint family business. This was run as a joint family business and really wasn't uh, the key focus of the group to run this as the core business. Yeah. And multiple decision makers, etc. as you know, you know what the issues with the joint family businesses are there. So I think these two reasons actually uh, were the drivers for them not allowing them to grow beyond a point. Yeah, now the focus seems to be on retail. Yeah. And Sanjay Gonga has given the mandate to his son, Shashwat, to turn this around. So how do you rate Shashwat's performance in all parameters? Goenka has been a great businessman and entrepreneur. Mm. And Shashwat brings in all those traits with him. In addition to this, he is young and dynamic. Yeah. And uh, he has knack for you know, consumer businesses. And we see clearly ever since he has taken it over, Spencer has done phenomenally well. And if you want to just compare in terms of when he took it over in 2013, the revenue was roughly around 1,300 crores. Yeah. Today, in three years, he has brought about 50% increase. Oh, yeah. So their group is already touching around 2,000 crore in terms of revenue. The number of customers, footfalls, average billing per customer, if you see, all that has kind of increased. And at the same time, he has taken a decision to rationalize the number of stores. So in 2013, when he took it over, it was 132 stores. Now he's brought it down to 118. But I think in all other parameters, he has, it's gone up. So I think the full credit should be given, and I'm very confident that he'll be able to uh, do even better in future. The other thing that strikes me about Shashwat is this Spencer does not have a pan-India presence. They're predominantly in South. In fact, he has exited the western part of the India. Does this strategy sound right? So let me say that West is an important market, and it's a pretty attractive market, yeah. because it's slightly more evolved in terms of organized retail than the rest of the part of the country. But I would say that this is a very competitive market at the same time. You look at some of the players who are operating. Any MNC who wants to come to India is targeting the West. True. Any national player anyway is present in the West. True, true. Local players, regional players, all are present in the West. Correct. So I think given the kind of competitive intensity, I think it's, it's a good strategy to build a brand in the rest, rest of the country, be uh, consolidate your position in those geographies, be a top two, top three player, and once the competition settles down okay. a little bit, few years down the line, maybe it's a good idea to come back to the West. And by then, you would have had a stronger balance sheet, a positive cash flow. That cash in the business, the, on the balance sheet can be used to acquire some of the companies, maybe. So acquisition could be one of the strategies when you want to look at West some, some you know, few years down the line. Now, when Shashwaz has gone and acquired Miragrosa.com, do you see this building synergy into existing business? So, Ravi, I would say, you know, uh, Retail is an omni-channel play. You can't have it completely online, you can't have it completely offline. Yeah. So every offline retailer will be using, or he is currently using the online channel as an additional channel of distribution. Yeah. And therefore, to that extent, I think their strategy is to have Miragrosa.com as a start point of their online uh, journey, which will be complemented with the existing stores. So they will use this as a channel, which will give them additional revenue, but give a very different buying uh, you know, uh, experience to the customer. IPO seems to be the flavor of the season. Do you see Spencer getting itself listed? 
Well, I think uh, first of all we must uh, acknowledge that this company has grown to the size without much leverage and without diluting equity. When they go to the market, imagine they'll be a profitable retailer. So what kind of response they'll get from the market, I mean, this is commendable. Having said that, I think they are anyway top retailers in the country today. They are, uh, they have already built a business which is profitable. Good pedigree. Good pedigree promoters. So five years from now, where do you see them? Five years from, the, from now, we certainly see them as one of the top players in the industry, which is going to be here sustaining themselves and uh, operating uh, some of the best operational matrices. A uh, company which is uh, which is not too much diluted, they will still be having a lot of equity, uh, which can be used as a currency to acquire businesses in future. There will be a pan India presence. I mean, they will certainly be one of the companies which which I think we must keep a tab on. Well put, Ashwini. Thanks a lot for being on the show. It's very nice having you here. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ravi. Well, that was Ashwini Kare's straight from the heart take on the company. On that note, it's time for another short break. On the other side, we take a look at the road ahead for Spencer's Retail. Welcome back. Shashwat Goenka is leaving no stones unturned to restructure Spencer's Retail operations so as to put it on the fast growth track. Towards this, he has hired a management consultancy firm, Boston Consulting Group or BCG, to guide the company and map out a new strategy. BCG is helping the company to improve the structure in areas such as merchandising, new store opening, customer analytics and in-store space optimization using global retail majors as a benchmark. So we as BCG have been associated with Spencer's Retail for more than three to four years now. Uh, over this period, we have worked on a variety of uh, subjects, but most prominently in really streamlining their organization model and uh, streamlining and adapting newer age systems and processes, which can help bring in efficiencies, reduce uh, bureaucracy, faster decision making, and also adopting the best practices from the global retail giants. So we help them adopt the right uh, merchandising process, the right uh, planning process, the right store expansion process, all of these help in cutting down any form of uh, wastage, help in expediting and, and, uh, and taking decisions faster and clarifying accountability so that there is nothing falling between the cracks. Apart from restructuring and focusing on operational efficiencies, Spencer's is also expanding its geographical presence. It will focus on Kolkata, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh regions in the east. For the northern market, it will concentrate on the UP and the NCR, whereas in the south, it will have a presence in Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. It will first consolidate in these markets before exploring opportunities in the western region. To strengthen its position in the east, north and south, the company plans to add 10 to 15 hypermarkets every year. Um, as far as growth is concerned, I definitely see Spencer's growing at a very rapid pace, much faster than it has been in the past, with 15 stores, 20 stores coming in year on year starting from next year. We have a very strong pipeline in place um, and hopefully those will fructify. With online players giving the traditional brick and mortar players a run for their money, Spencer's too decided to register its presence with the acquisition of Meragrocer.com. This acquisition seeks to complement its existing business and cater to customers in the national capital region for starters. The company will eventually scale up its e-commerce presence. Food and grocery e-commerce in my mind is something which is more of a convenience play. And, and for us, the whole objective of being in the e-commerce space was again with the focus of how do we get a larger share of wallet of the consumer. Because in a hypermarket, the consumer probably comes two or three times in a month to get their weekly shopping basket. But there are a lot of the food and grocery items that you have to buy, for example, milk and bread on a daily or every other day basis. And how do we tap into that aspect of the consumer's needs? And, and hence the acquisition of Mira Grocer was something that we did to sort of give us a head start into the e-commerce space. Plans are to take Meragrocer.com to all markets where Spencer's has stores. This would help the company to broaden the customer base and break even faster. Looking at the results of the last three years, Father Sanjeev Goenka has every reason to be proud that his son Shashwat has taken to business like a duck to water. 
If the current growth is any indication, then one can safely predict that Spencer's retail will be another star in the R.P. Sanjeev Goenka stable. Well, Shashwat has passed the first test his father put him through rather impressively. Spencer's retail is slowly but surely moving into the black. Clearly, business is in his genes. Here I am reminded of Dravya Dolakya, the Surat-based diamond